We've got the rain today, but it comes with the added benefit of, uh, what's the right word, a concophony of aromas. So we've got petrichor from the rain, and I've just walked past a ton of hawthorn, and that smells amazing this year. It smells amazing every year. I think it's nesting season for the birds. This is all a wetland area. And there of course is the beautiful waterfall. And we have indeed done the obligatory Ford crossing this morning. You're going back in lads. Go on then boys. They love messing about in the river. Come on then, nutters. Go on then. You look like a drowned rat, Reg. Well, a car interrupted our morning. That doesn't very often happen. Come on then, boys. I meant to be doing some planting of uh, hanging baskets and flower borders today. Should have done it yesterday when the sun was out. I suppose it'll be better for the plants. Let's get on with it. Oh, as I was saying, Reg, you look like a drowned rat. Also, pleased to see the cows aren't in the field I've got to cross. Thank goodness. Spoke too soon, didn't I? You stop there, crazy bulls. And they're trying to get through edge. I think they are, you know. Go on then, lads. Go on then, run. 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 Nutters. Go on then, Reg. Go on then. Hello, chaps. Welcome along to the vlog. So, I mentioned yesterday that I had a few more tricks up my sleeve regards safety for installing the heating elements on the tank. So, we've got these uh, heater mats, silicon heater mats that we're going to stick onto the tanks. And they do come with a overheat switch. Um, what's it called now? Uh, a thermistor built in. So if they get too hot, it's not the right term. But you know what I mean. It'll, it'll break the circuit. That's resettable, of course. Um, I am worried, however, that we could have a situation where one of the tanks are filled and there isn't any liquid inside the tank so the heat mat will turn on and there'll be no heat sinking at the back and we'll have a runaway effect potentially burning it out so i've got some inline fuses there's one over here so basically i've got some little 20 mil by 5 mil glass fuses here and uh, they fit into this little fitting and we've got some <laughs> Totally wrong piece I've actually got there. We've got some little inline fuse sockets and I've installed them at the side of the tank and of course then we can just go forwards with come on focus you son of a cigarette. So we can yeah just install these and if there's any runaway current then these will blow at 2 amps and that will just break the heat circuit completely. That's not all however. So in order to understand that we've got 12 volt power in the, in the control box for the fermenters, then I've got a green LED indicator on the front of the, uh, on the front of the control box. I want to know if the heating element's on. So we're going to install a little red LED as well. 
Then I want to know if the fermenter is cooling. I don't want to know if, the, I mean the STC is going to display to me that yes it's calling for heat, but how do I know it's actually getting heat? All that is doing, all the STC is doing is switching a relay. So on the output side of the relay, which means that the relay has functioned correctly and closed, so this will be a diagnostic tool for me as well if there's any failed relays, these LEDs won't illuminate. So for the pump we're going to pop a blue LED on the output side of the relay. And then I also want to know that the valve has operated correctly. So it's alright having the pump in the glycol tank pushing glycol down the pipes, but if the valve at the back of the fermenter isn't open, that glycol can't recirculate around the cooling coils and do its job. So we are going to install, wait for it, well, I've just got one out and I can't find it. Uh, here we are, a white LED for the valve. Now the difference being, the valve operates on 12 volts, so I've got a 12 volt LED. The heating coil and the pump work on 240, so they're fine, we can just wire them straight from the output side of the relay and the return path, the neutral path, will just share the closest neutral cable to it, which just happens to be the one going into the STC 1000 on the door of the control boxes. But the trick with this LED, the white one for 12 volts, these are AC-DC LEDs, not the band. So they'll work on DC current, but they'll work either way around, which causes a problem. How do we know the valve is open? because we switch the polarity on those valves in order to close them. So this will illuminate continuously. So, of course, might sound crazy because this is a light emitting diode, but we actually put a diode in line with this little fella. So if I zoom down on my very messy workbench, this is why I've got the specs on, you see. I'm gonna pop in a little, I can't remember, anyway that's the code of these diodes, 1N4001, if I actually frame it. So we're going to pop one of these diodes in there, so first things first, I want to just check the polarity of it, so we'll pop it on the table, we'll bring in the meter and we'll put red there that's closed so in order for the current to flow forwards we want to have the little white section on the diode pointing at the LEDs that we want to switch so I'm terrible at framing today I'm sorry we'll just fold around the output lead there and we know exactly what that's for and then the input if you like I'm just going to crop it back, I'm going to hold it in my hand and get a little bit of solder and we're just going to, we're just going to tin this lead just a touch. I'm hoping I'm in shot now. There we go, so that's slightly tinned. And then we've been using this uh, black and white, black and red, <laughs> colour blind. Get them glasses on some black and red speaker cable and all I've been doing is splitting the end I've been trimming one end back to kind of compensate for the fact that we've got a diode on the end and then I'll just move that out of the way and we'll do the same thing with this we'll just tin the end of this uh, red cable there she be and then we're going to try probably won't work very well but we're going to try to flow these two together this is the tricky bit I need to kind of balance myself on the deck so I don't wobble about too much and just reflow that solder 
Let it cool off. And bingo. There she is. So that diode now is going to prevent the LED lighting up if the polarity is in the other direction. And we're just going to cover the diode up so we don't accidentally make contact with the other side of the cable which would effectively remove it from the circuit. So we'll just close this up. It does work, this does work, so I've done it to three or four of the fermenter control boxes already. There we go, that's nice and snug. So let's take this across to our control box and get it installed. So we're here at the box and uh, you'll have to excuse the white balance a little bit. It's really quite dark in here. So I've increased the sensitivity on the camera so you can see what's going on. So this is the white LED down here at the bottom and without me getting in the way too much we're going to try to hook all of this up and get it kind of working at least so you can see the madness behind my method so we're going to put the diode on this side here so basically what we've got in the control box is an STC 1000 calling for heat and cold when it calls for heat it just switches this relay here and this relay then switches um, 240 volt uh, mains to the output side of the relay and down to, I've got one of them here actually. We'll be installing this momentarily to one of these, as you can see, 400 watt, 230 volt heat pads. They are really quite good. You can see the the heating elements and there's the little thermal cutout that I was talking about. So the power supply for the heater of course doesn't come straight from the mains buzz bar here but it goes through that little inline fuse, the two amp fuse that we've installed so that comes in and goes straight out. Now conversely if we're going to be calling for cold then the STC will switch its relays inside here and these are all uh, bog standard STC 1000s and when that asks for cool it switches on the coil of these two relays. One of these relays switches on a pump circuit and that pump is in the glycol bath. So I haven't got a pump pumping into a dead end circuit all the time. It only turns on when a fermenter needs it and we can daisy chain these in fact I do and then the other side is the 12 volt supply from this little fella here you can't quite see it there's a 12 volt LED driver there only one amp so at the moment these are double pole double throw relays and when the relays cl uh, open sorry when the relays open the polarity is such that the 12 volt signal coming out of this relay is the correct polarity to close the valve. Just a blue motorised valve, 12 volt, very simple. Sorry, not blue, it's got a blue cover on it. It's a half inch motorised valve, or it might be three quarters of an inch. And uh, when we want to cool, the contacts are flipped. You'll be able to see underneath, maybe not, but basically the 12 volt comes in like this and then it switches over onto the top onto the normally closed contacts and it reverses the polarity. So on the output side, the live and the, or the positive and the negative rail, they switch, the positive and the ground rail, rail switch. Therefore, changing the polarity and the valve closes. Now when that valve closes, oh sorry, opens to allow glycol through, I want to know about that. That's where this little fella comes in. So we're going to send this cable up and around, snake it around. I like to put a bit of slack in my cables as we come past a, an opening door section, shall we say, which is basically what we've got here. And I'm just trying to thread it in behind. I'll do that in a second. And I've cut it to length. That to there, and then that over there. 
should give us about yay long. So I'll just chop that there like that. That should be long enough for us to get to where we need to be. So this is also a little bit of trial and error. So I'm going to strip these terminal, uh, this cable back. We're going to hook it up to the terminals. And when I come to power it up, because the valve will be calling for heat, because I know that the tank is a little bit on the cold side before I turned it off. Because it's calling for heat, um, the light should not be on. So if the light's on, we've just got these the wrong way around. And it's a very simple case of just swapping the black and the red wires. The wires that are already in here, the green wire and the brown one, it's just some foam cable that I had spare when I set this up actually. I should really change it out because the single stranded stuff, it just tends to snap. It, it work hardens because it's just a single strand of copper wire. And if you do too much with it, it work hardens and it snaps. So you have to be delicate with it. You know what, I should have really gone around the back of that as well, but I think we'll be all right there. We'll send that around the back of there. And that's gonna go up and around our loop, back to the box. I do on occasion as well like to bend and kink the wires where possible so they know what route they're meant to follow. So now um, we may as well wire up the other end of this wire here. This is the neutral that I'm gonna use for all of the other LEDs that we've got on the front. Now that the 12 volt one is wired up, we'll go ahead and wire up these um, 240 volt LEDs. So we're just gonna share the port I'm probably in the way here I know I'm trying not to block the camera and also trying not to get any little careless careless whiskers of wire just poking out of the contact I'm just going to check now that's all all the little strands of copper are in the in the clamp terminal I'll do it my right hand I can judge talk a little bit better with my right hand and uh, yeah as I say again we'll bend the wires in position and that to me looks very good so now what we need to do is start to send our cables for the output of the heater and cooler relay to the LEDs so that they light up So enter stage left, some 0.5 millimeter cable. I couldn't get this from tool station or screw fix. So what I've actually done is bought a roll of um, smaller 0.5 uh, two core and I've just gone and stripped out the brown and blue as and when I need them. It's hard though because we always seem to use a heck of a lot more brown conductor on a job like this than we do blue. So there's a lot of waste. Look, well, it's not waste cable, but it's just the wrong colour for what I want it for. So I'm just going to do the same thing that I did earlier on. Just weave this around. This is the red one. So we're going to run all the way to the bottom across and in and then that is the output side of the hot relay or the heat relay so let's send him down around and then ultimately into here that's the one so at the moment we don't actually have the heater hooked up because I haven't stuck it to the bottom of the tank yet but while you're, while you're here, we'll do that 
and you can see how I'm going to install that as well. So I'm happy with that. I'll just bung those wires to the back so they're out of the way. And then we're going to do the same thing for the pump LED, which is the blue one. Just a quick strip of the cable there. See if we can find it. It's really quite tricky to find these holes with and not getting in the way of the camera. So when I've actually finished filming, I'll probably go in with a torch and just check that I've not got, like I say, any little random strands of cable poking out the way. Right, and then we'll do the same thing. I like to just put a little loop on there, look. So we're going out and around before we start to ultimately go towards the other side of the control box. And then we're going down to the bottom again, then across and up into the output of the pump. And we'll just route this behind any cables that we think that needs to be sat at the back of. And then this one is actually already got two cables in it in a uh, little, shall we see if we can get in and have a look. So yeah, it's just got a little um, fork terminal with two cables in it already, because obviously this is daisy chained onto all of the other control, fermenter controllers. So we just need to work him in there and then we'll screw him down nice and tight. And there we go, so that's in. We've managed to get that one in. So let's zoom back out a touch. I'll just pop you back over here. And then all I'm gonna do now All I'm going to do now is come in with a bunch of tie wraps and we're going to tidy up these cables as to where we've looped in and around. So we'll have one there for a start. I'm probably going to get a little sticky pad as well on the door because I had to pull the others off. I'll we'll pop a sticky pad on there and tie the cables up that way as well. And then we're just gonna, I've got one in my mouth, so my voice has gone funny. But we're just gonna zip them all up around here. Kind of as quick as possible. Let's just take that. It's sometimes quite tricky to get your hands in and uh, do this. Particularly when you've got <laughs> when you've got a camera over your shoulder, and of course all of the all of the components already installed. There we go. Look, I just let go of it, and it's not easy. It's not easy to get the other end of the cable tie. There it is. What? I'm pulling one hand forward, or I'm just pulling it back. Come on now. Let's get it. Let's get it on, lad. Oh, you but beauty. There we go. So that's on. And sometimes, once you've got like the most difficult one done, all the rest of them seem to just fall into line. So this one here will tighten things up nicely. I want to avoid those two cables because they're going out of the box. Yeah, again, like the other end. It's such a pig to do. But uh, it's very satisfying once you, once you get it. There we are. And I've got some little pliers some pin nose pliers which I like to use to grab hold of the 
tie wraps and or zip ties and tighten them up but I could I can already see we've probably got a little bit much of that one there we go so looking at that we've got a bit of excess cable on on the uh, red and white red and black that's the second time I've said red and white on the red and black speaker cable but that's not a bad thing and then where we're we going down here I think, yeah, we'll tie them up down here as well. And this should, realistically, be the last one. Just sort them all out. Oh, I nearly lost it then. That would have been fun. Well, there you go. That's, as I often say, that's 10 minutes you're never going to get back into it watching me do that. So that really just needs shortening, but it'll do for now. Close enough is often good enough. So I'm just going to tr trim all these loose tails off, which often get in the way and irritate me a little bit. This could all be tidied up a touch. And like I say, I'll probably get a sticky pad and we'll come back to this, but provided you're not in and out of this all the time, it shouldn't be too much of a problem and uh, I think that's everything hooked up so we're gonna see if we've got the clarity right now and we'll just shut the box and uh, we'll plug in the connector right so the lights on and the heating's on so that's telling me that the polarity is the wrong way around now the blue light is on because these are connected to several other fermenters down the way and they are calling for cold so this blue light is telling us that the glycol pumps on it's not telling us that this particular unit's cooling it's just telling us the glycol pumps on so we can have a red and a blue simultaneously but you don't want a white and a red at the same time which is what we've got here so I'm going to pull this open again we're going to take out this blue, I've done it again, this black and red cable. This also gives us the opportunity to shorten it a little bit. So the red was on the left. We'll swap it round now and we'll put the red on the right. We'll put the red on the right. We'll have that slightly longer than the black, which will be on the left. And that should seals nice and neat in the box this is one of the reasons why it's handy to have that little bit of extra extra wire on there should you need to just yank a cable over a bit if you've got a spare inch or two it's often not worth chopping it off rather just wrap it up to one side if you want your box to be perfectly neat and you know that you've got everything if I was building this on the bench it'd be a different story altogether I've just spotted a bit of tie wrap cable there and then these two cables I can now see that when I come back in they've decided to come and say hello to me so that one's probably a bit long so I'll just shorten that one while I'm at it. This was the tricky bugger to get in as well, so we'll just take a couple of inches off of it. So this ain't gonna be the most interesting vlog in the world, is it? Because, uh, well, it might be if you're into this, but it's, it's kind of live, live prototyping and panel building so you're not finding many youtubers doing it oh well there we go now this is always fun so you're in a little tight confined space you don't have a magnetic screwdriver and the screw decides to liberate itself from the hole there we go I was lucky sometimes that can take absolutely ages to get it back in 
So let's get this. Oh, I've been lucky with that as well. That went straight in first time. So now I've shrunk them cables down. They're no longer poking out and interfering with me. We'll stick that back there and we'll turn it on. We shouldn't have a white light now. And sure enough, we don't. But as I mentioned, we do have the green, the red and the blue. So it's calling for heat, that's fine. The 12 volts working. It's calling for heat. So the fuse hasn't blown either, or the relays are working. And then the pump's on. Now the reason the pump's on is fermenter seven. I'll take you off the tripod. Now the reason the pump's on is fermenter six, seven and eight are all linked on the same pump system. And if we look over here, we've got fermenter six and he's looking for some cooling activity there. So he's got the pump on and he's got his valve open, but his heat's off. So just at a quick glance, we can see exactly what's going on. And we can see that the pump is on over here. So if you've got like three blue lights on and three white lights, and you know, they're all calling for cold. So there's gonna be a lot of stress on your cooling system. This one, for instance, is doing the same thing, but there's only two of these coupled together. And then these fermenters, which I've not retrofitted with the lights yet, all have their own independent maxi chiller at the back. So they will operate without the blue light ever showing at the same time as the red one. So there we are. Let's, uh, let's stick this heat mat on at the bottom if you really want to hang around for that. And uh, we'll actually try it out proper. Right, this was really tricky on the first one that I did. So I'm not going to zoom in too close because you'll probably see my belly hanging out while I'm laid on the floor trying to get this in position. So first thing I'm going to do is just dry fit just to make sure we've got enough space all the way around. And it looks like it's just catching the corner of that um, foam there. So we'll just we'll just get in there and we'll scrape that back. There's a lot of adhesive from the, the foam that I can't get off but I don't see it as a problem because it's adhesive on the back of here as well anyway. So let's pull off the backing strip. Now it's very, very, very sticky this stuff. So you kind of just get one shot at it. So last time I made the mistake of uh, heating the pad up before I put it on and it did not want to play ball at all. So I'm just gonna leave that there like that. It won't fall off. Now I've got a roller. I'm gonna go and get the roller because I want to actually roll out all the bubbles before I actually stick this on. That looks like it's gonna end up a little high. I wonder if I can pull that back off and just reset it just a touch. I'm lucky there. Last time I couldn't get it off at all. Yeah, I'm gonna just find this just a tad tricky. That looks that's gonna miss as well. <laughs> Not easy. That looks better. Right, I'll go and get the roller. So I'm just thinking it might be just as easy for me to lay on my back for this. And then I can see exactly where it wants to go. That looks really good. Right then, I'm going to roll this direction first. So we're rolling all the air bubbles out on the first one that I did. There's definitely an air bubble or two. 
and it's really quite frustrating to see that in there because they're potentially little hot spots. So it fits nicely around the cone, gets tight down at the bottom here, but it's it's gone on there really well. And this is probably the best one that I've fitted yet. It normally works out the other way when you've got the camera rolling. So let's just get this nice and tight. If anything, we're just gonna see a bit of trouble just behind here where we were originally going to be a little bit tight with that foam but that's pinged in nicely behind it so I'm just going to roll, roll on top of that and as anticipated it's gone on lovely oh I'm really really impressed I can't feel any air bubbles anywhere Normally you can see them if you cast the light on there, but that's good. So now we just need to just need to hook it up to the electric. So all I did was I'll send a cable down. So I'll send a cable down live and neutral from the output of the relay, of course, and the neutral bus bar. And that'll come down here, and then we've got these little gel pads where you can make your connections and then once those connections are inside this little gel thing clips together like a little junction box and then we'll tuck that up behind here it'll be good to uh, get wet if we have any accidents although obviously I'm not going to intentionally get it wet and then that hopefully is all that we're going to need and then I've got this bit of insulation that I cut off the tank so I'm going to put a bit of adhesive on there and I'm just going to stick this back on over the top of the heat pad in fact it's gone on on its own there look and then that'll help keep the heat pad slightly insulated while we're while we're running it but I'm extremely pleased with that one so that's it fitting a heater and modifying the controllers uh, Multiple use Rory controllers, I think, is the name of the video. If you want to build one of these controllers up here, there you can find them on the channel. It's a two part build and it pretty much shows you everything I've done in them. You can improve upon the design, and I have done over the years, but I just haven't put a new video up. I suppose if you just have a look at Rory controller upgrades over the past year or two, you'll see all of those videos. But that's it. This video is definitely long enough in its own right, so I'm going to end it here. I'm going to sod off, get some silver tape, tape this back on and wire this up and get it heating because it's actually a couple of degrees lower than it should be and it wants this heat pad. So I'll see you on the next one boys and girls. Thanks again for watching. See ya.